Hi there, in this video we will learn about the need and the nature of comparative statics. Uh, basically, when we study our economic situations, we have equilibrium in, for example, market model or macroeconomic equilibrium is there. But definitely it is not likely that it will remain at the same place. The equilibrium can be shifted from one point to another. So that brings in the need for comparative statics. Let us see in detail that how this can work. For example, if all the variables are at rest, it is an equilibrium and it is considered as static in most of the cases. Though there is dynamic equilibrium as well, but this is not a part of this course or this video. Comparing equilibria is therefore called comparative statics. So accordingly, if we have more than one equilibrium, that is equilibria, then we can compare them and we can come up with the comparative static analysis. Uh, now these new equilibrium, how we can get those equilibrium and how we can compare them, this is the question that we are going to answer. And the one aspect is the qualitative aspect, that in which direction the change is happening. And the other aspect is the quantitative aspect in which by how much it is happening that is the change. Now here we are, uh, we have the donuts per day and we have the um, price per unit. It's like a simple supply and the demand function. We have this red supply line and this blue demand curve. Their intersection takes place, uh, takes place at this point and then uh, we get this equilibrium output and this is the equilibrium price. But if the demand is favorably changing, for example, due to increased income or due to a weather change or the ch change in the tastes, then the demand curve will expand or shift outwards. Here with the help of these green arrows, we can see that a new demand curve has risen and that will give rise to a new equilibrium which is the intersection of the old supply curve and the new demand curve. It will give rise to 6000 as the equilibrium output and somewhere in the middle of 2 and 3 dollars or pounds, in this case dollars, as the equilibrium price. So if the demand is increasing favorably, more of the equilibrium output will be there as well as the price can also increase a little bit depending upon the elasticities, but this is not our concern in this video. So you see that there is a need to compare this equilibrium with that equilibrium, just like I did, that both of the values they have increased and the equilibria are showing different results. Similarly, if the supply shrinks, for example, from S1 to S2, there will be this equilibrium and it will convert into that equilibrium. This was the initial price, the initial equilibrium output, this is the second equilibrium and it has this equilibrium output and an equilibrium price. Now we see another example, it is from macroeconomic analysis. The LM curve, the initial LM curve and the initial IS curve, liquidity for money curve and investment savings curve. This is the point of intersection of the two. This will give rise to the equilibrium level of national income and the equilibrium level of interest rate. But if we shift the IS curve from IS to IS bar, this will be the new equilibrium. And before that, if we experiment with LM curve, it will also shift outward. For example, it will give rise to another equilibrium. So you see E bar and E double bar are the two equilibria that will engender. Here we are increasing both of the uh, values that is by shifting the IS curve from this point to that point and the LM curve is also being shifted. This is why we have three equilibria and we can compare them and we have three levels of national income equilibrium level and uh, two levels of interest rate at equilibrium. 
coincidentally this equilibrium is giving rise to this interest rate and this also is giving rise to this interest rate actually there are three equilibrium values here so we see that not just one curve can be shifted more than one shift can take place that is in both of the curves so this is how the uh, comparative static analysis of the simultaneous equilibrium in the goods and money market can be studied. Now we have the increase in the savings and uh, this is another possibility that we are considering here. This is the investment curve, this is the saving curve getting shifted from this to that and initially the initi uh, level of uh, national comet equilibrium was y1 now it is y2 so this is another possibility now what we do is we uh, consider that there are two uh, assumptions in it and they are basic to the equilibrium because whenever there is equilibrium we assume that the equilibrium is achieved instantaneously Mere compa merely compare the initial uh, the pre-change value that is E1 with the post change value that is E2. So pre change and the post value, uh, post change value should be compared and any value in between should not be considered. This is one assumption, assumption. because when we do this, uh, it might turn into another type of analysis where time is the independent variable and that is known as the dynamic analysis. The equilibrium that is achieved is stable and due to that we can say that the rate of change of equilibrium value of an endogenous variable with respect to uh, the change in a particular parameter or exogenous variable is stable. It means that either we are at this point or that point and they are stable. We are not uh, staying here or there anywhere else. These are the two points that are possible and the change from this point to that point is instantaneous without any time lag. So these are the two assumptions that we have. Now functionally speaking we have this function that we are trying to address here. Generally speaking a mathematical function and equilibrium value of the endogenous variable is y and the parameter or the exogenous variable is x. What we can do is we can do this mathematically and we can find the difference quotient and difference quotient we will consider a few things and then we'll take its difference and then divide it as well. We already know that change is represented with delta and if there is a change in x for example it will move from its initial value that is x0 to the next value that is x1. So this is pre-change value and this is post-change value. The difference of the two that is x1 minus x0 is equal to delta x. Um, x0 old value of x as we considered that x has an initial or old value. And this is the new value the post change value in which we have added a, a certain segment of x that is delta x. So initial value or the old value plus some increment will give us the new value. The function y is equal to this changes from this function to that function. This was the initial function and this is the post change function. Now the change in y per unit of change in x. How y will change if there is a per unit change in x is equal to this expression. So we uh, write this expression here and its value is equal to this. Delta x will remain the same. However, here in delta y we will write the new value or the post change value minus the original value or the initial value of the function that is function y. So value after change and value before change gives us the difference. This is why we call it difference quotient. We are taking the difference as well as we are going to divide it. Now this is the numerical uh, and it is uh, based on this numerical example that is this function. We are considering that this is the initial value of this function that is why introducing x0 instead of x and this is the post change value 
So now it is more evident. This is the pre-change value and this is the post-change value. Now we put their values. We already have developed this formula. This is the post-change value, pre-change value. Here we have put the post-change value minus pre-change value. Delta x in the denominator will remain the same. Now we can solve this. This is a simple formula of a plus b whole square. Expanding it and retaining this uh, function as it is, except for the minus sign that will reverse the signs inside. And then we multiply this 3 throughout this value and uh, throughout this expression, minus 4 will remain the same. Now we can expand this and solve this by getting rid of this square bracket. Cancellation happens and uh, in addition to this uh, plus and minus signs, cancellation, there will be a uh, cancellation in the denominator as well, that is delta x. It will be cancelled out with one of the delta x here and this delta x here. So the result will be this. We can rearrange it and write the initial value plus the increment in this way. And this will give us the rate of change of y with respect to rate of, uh, uh, with respect to x. So this expression requires a stipulation and it is that delta x will approach to zero. If this approaches to zero, we can find out the result of it. And for that, we know that we can use the limits because um, without limits, this will become zero. If, we, if this will become zero and definitely the overall answer of it will become undefined. So this is why we are using the symbol of approaches to that is the limit symbol. So we introduce this limit and we try to find out the change in y because we are interested in the change in y due to change in x. So the change in x will be equal to this um, that is approaching to zero and this will give us the derivative of the function. The uh, very foundation of this is beyond the scope of this course but we can take it as it is we can consider it as a possibility as a well established phenomenon that if we apply this limit that is the um, approach uh, to zero of the independent variable the change in it then uh, this whole expression will give us the derivative so we apply it and this will become the left hand side and this is equal to the derivative as we have taken it from the definition of the derivative. And this is another way of writing a derivative that we introduce a prime or a bar right after the function symbol that is f bar x. Now as per the definition we can solve this uh, here instead of delta x we can put 0. So this is the value of this function that we have already developed that is the delta the value of delta y over delta x so we have this value taken from here and instead of delta x i can write zero so this term will become zero and finally it will be equal to 6x so this 6x is basically showing the rate of change of y with respect to x that is the derivative you see that numerically we can solve this by using this method of or using the limits and this was the process of it and this is based on the difference quotient these are the various assumptions of comparative static analysis these are a few economic examples and this is basically our topic in which we have tried to find the derivative by using this method however we have another method which is commonly used and in that we can use some rules of uh, differentiation which will be applied on different types of functions so in the upcoming videos we will learn those rules as well thank you